how to find MB2 canal and how to make it easy to instrument. This is the new episode of BG Dental Tips. Let's go. Dear colleagues, dear friends, welcome back to uh, BG Dental Tips. And as we promised, uh, we start some episodes dedicated to MB2, mesobuccal canal number two of the upper molars. In one case, uh, well documented, I'm going to share with you with the tips and tricks that may help you to find this root canal and to make um, instrumentation of this canal easier. Okay, so let's go. Here we have a retreatment case. Uh, you can see from that perspective, after crown removal, we have class one cavity. We have not huge access, honestly speaking, but we have a screw post inside, which for me makes no sense in such cases because you have enough tooth structures, enough resistance, enough ferrule to retain crown without any extra posts in uh, root canals but that's another story just few tips about the removal of the five of, of the um, the screw post uh, first of all we have to drill our composite around you know and to preserve as much two structures as you can uh, once you uh, um, reach the the post surface then you take a thin bore and you start to drill around the post together with the post so you drill the post partially and composite uh, at the same time because if you will have the thicker bore and then you will start to drill around you will also drill out a lot of tooth uh, structure so the ideal uh, goal is to uh, get free, free zone from composite from build up uh, material and then you use a um, uh, simple uh, metal ultrasonic tip even for calculus removal and in a while the the the, 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 the screw post uh, metal post will be taken out in an easy way okay so that's not an, a difficult procedure just you need to have some patient uh, patience sorry and uh, to try to make your preparation and to, to make the procedure as uh, minimally invasive as possible Okay, so now afterwards, after we removed everything, after we cleaned uh, pulp chamber, by the way, one tip, okay, when you have teeth like that with um, resorcinol or uh, when the, the pulp floor is dark and uh, dirty, uh, we can use uh, two things to make it clear and clean and to be able to see orifices better. So the first one is sandblaster. So the best is sandblaster. You, you use aluminum oxide 27 or 50 microns, you sandblast this pulp chamber, everything becomes super clean and, and visible. Or you can use phosphoric acid, okay? You just put phosphoric acid, micro brush, five, 10 seconds, dry, rinse dry, and it will be cleaner, okay? And then you can visualize some elements that are very important for us to proceed our treatment uh, further on. Okay, so what we can see here in the middle of the uh, pulp chamber is sort of um, hole, okay? And sometimes we may be afraid because of the perforation, okay? so. Uh, how do we differentiate if it is perforation or not? Another tip is just use, you tell me, okay, in comments, how will you um, differentiate if it is uh, perforation or it is orifice, okay? Just write down in comments right now, please. I, I will wait a bit because it will be easy, interesting to see uh, the methods that you may use. Maybe there are some different methods that I will uh, share, share with you right now and uh, we will learn from our own experience uh, all together, okay? So I'm telling you, you can use Apex Locator, okay? You can take file, Apex Locator, connect it, and then if it's a red lamp, perforation. If not, lucky, okay? So that was not a perforation, it was and a reference to the MB2, but what I would like to show you, what I would like to highlight, which is super, super important, is that if you take a look on the mesial aspect of MB1, uh, okay, of MB1, let me just do it like this because it will be easier uh, schematically to show you what's going on. So that's the mesial aspect of the MB1, okay? And imagine this is MB2, okay? That, that's the big difference in terms of the projection. So imagine that this dentin here is like a terrace over the 
entrance to get the straight line access to the middle third of the canal. And at this moment, we can make uh, one of the most typical mistakes when we will take an instrument, even thin one, we try to navigate canal and we do a step, okay, ledge, and that's it. So what we have to do, we have to move the orifice measly and buckly with uh, thin instruments. You can do it with uh, special bores or you can do it with, uh, with ultrasonic tips. So this is what you have to do in, uh, in the very beginning. So in that case, I used um, um, the carbide bores, uh, thin ones that uh, can be used for uh, fissurotomy, very thin ones, the, you can find them from SS White. So I start to drill a bit measly and, uh, and buckly, not inside, but more outside, okay? More uh, lateral um, movement. Uh, then uh, you can see here isthmus, which is better, uh, now it's visualizing better. And then uh, what we can do, we can start using the ultrasonic tip, for example, like endophile, uh, U-file, okay, endochuck. You can bend this uh, stainless steel file, this is important because if this is actually very important to use stainless steel uh, ultrasonic files rather than nickel titanium, because nickel titanium uh, a part of that, we cannot bend them, but they will be separated very quickly uh, because of the action of the ultrasonic energy, okay? So stainless steel file is the best option in such a cases. So you pre-curve the tip of this uh, stainless steel file, you enter the orifice just very, at the very beginning, okay? Do not go down, just enter a bit. And then like, like an excavator, you will start to elevate or lift up the dentin in the direction meso buckle okay meso buckle direction just to drill a bit the orifice to to reposition the orifice into that direction okay because think in your in your mind that the level of mb1 and mb2 has to be more or less similar okay so what we are go going to do now we are actually uh, uh, providing a stress free or stress less entrance to the middle third of the MB2, okay? This is super, super important. I'm happy to invite you to our best hands-on course about endo and resto approach, big endo resto course, primary endos, retreatments, post-endodontic rehabilitation in a beautiful training center with a high-tech equipment. We'll be happy to see you all. And now let's continue with our topic. And you can see here after the already instrumentation, uh, after the instrumentation, you can see the position of this orifice. Now it's not in the center, it's more shifted to a meso buckle uh, surface. And that's the important step. So first of all, to create a stress-free access to the middle third of the canal, not just stress-free access to the orifice itself, but to the middle third of canal. And another tip that I would like to share with you is that you have to start instrumentation of MB2 only once MB1 is completely finished, okay? You do your instrumentation, irrigation, everything is done on MB2 and then you start with MB, sorry, you start with MB1, you finish MB1, and then you go to MB2. That's important because, you know, in many cases, they can be connected, these two canals. If they are not connected, even though between these canals, you may have some anastomosis and so on. So when you instrument, when you irrigate MB1, sodium hypochlorite partially goes into the MB2, dissolves some soft tissues. So it will become easier for you to access and to navigate MB2 later on okay so we finish this case without any post uh, we refine uh, preparations uh, with um, uh, the bores and uh, this is how the tooth looked like uh, before a final impression before uh, making final crown i hope that these uh, these tips with mb2 were useful and uh, if you want more we have a lot of stuff if you want more we have a video step-by-step -step video how to make the access to the mm, middle third of mb2 easier so it will be a complete video about seven or eight minutes with a voiceover clinical video not edited i mean just like it was if you're interested write down in comments video and we will post it in our dental videos uh, folder.
very soon, okay? So, hope you are fine and again, may the dental force be with you.